This is the final part of a three-part series on the Big Three Challenges that come with the quest to understand who lives with whom and why. Three hard problems that are not easily addressed by standard statistical methods. Part 3. Interactions If the relationship between two variables is conditional on a third variable, we can write it like this. The response variable y is a function of another variable x, but that depends somehow on z. In other words, the strength and form of the dependency of y on x depends on z. Ecosystems present us with a mind-numbing array of factors, some known, some unknown, that can plausibly affect a species or other variable of interest. The factors can be other species, abiotic environmental variables, and disturbances. We do an experiment or find relationships at a particular place and time. If we try this at another place or time, the results are likely to be different. Context is important because other factors come into play, often ones that we aren't measuring. The sea star can be a keystone species controlling mussels on rocky sea coasts. So, symbolically, mussels are a function of sea stars. But Research has shown that the effects of sea stars are greatly altered by the degree of wave exposure. And, the deeper you look, the more complex the system becomes. The sea star effect is moderated not only by wave exposure, but also by another predator, whelks, upwelling intensity, and tidal height on the rocks. The complexity of this system has been shown by decades of study by scientists on the west coast of North America. The system is so complex that no simple, strong generalization can be made about the relationship between any two components. The complexity originates from the large number of important interacting factors. Making it even more complex is that these factors act at a wide range of spatial and temporal scales. So how do ecologists deal with complex contingencies that stand in the way of strong generalizations? First, many ecologists choose to ignore them, presenting results from a specific context as a great leap forward. Of course, this is not a real remedy, but it seems to satisfy many funding agencies, peer reviewers, and editors. Second, we can attempt to include all of the important factors in a linear model. An interaction term looks like this. The relationship between x1 and y is modified by another variable x2. In a more extreme example, x2 might reverse the slope of the relationship between x1 and y. In three dimensions, the response surface for an interaction of x1 and x2 on y looks like this. Linear interaction terms construct a curved surface from straight lines. This forms a specific limited range of shapes all of them hyperbolic paraboloids. The number of interaction terms goes up very steeply with the number of factors in a model and quickly becomes overwhelming and difficult to interpret. Back to the sea star and mussel example, this table shows interactions from only three factors, site, exposure, and sea stars but still difficult to interpret. Let's switch to a plant's response to moisture and temperature as an example of a nonlinear interaction. We can graph the response to moisture at a series of temperatures. At the lowest temperature, the plant is almost absent. 
at slightly higher temperature, we see a definite peak abundance in the middle of the temperature range. As temperature increases, the shape of the response curve, the peak height, and the optimum moisture shifts. Converting this to a 3D surface and rotating it reveals the nonlinear species response with strong interaction between temperature and moisture. Compare this with the shape of a linear interaction as described previously. Last, we do have a number of methods that automatically include interactions and readily accept complex nonlinear responses. None of these remedies make ecological complexity go away. They just make it a bit more manageable. That is because this third challenge, dealing with interactions among many factors, is actually the hardest and most fundamental problem of all ecology, not just community ecology. The consequences of this problem run deep. Simple, strong generalizations are hard to find. Predictive theory and models are weak. This complexity originates from the large number of interacting factors. Making it even more complex is that these factors act at a wide range of spatial and temporal scales. <laughs>